guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany here with another video to help you guys live a happy, healthy, awesome life in a wheelchair. And I am here for the final time with Bob to go over the bike. Uh, we tried to do two lives and that was a, a fail. So if you guys were on the lives, thank you for showing up for five minutes. Uh, and this is the, the final attempt to get all the information that we're looking for. So again, Bob is a motorcycle adventurist, is what I'm calling him. And he was injured in a motorbike accident with his wife who sadly passed away. And he wanted to be able to continue riding and adventuring and doing all the things. So he adapted his bike. Uh, and what we're gonna see today is all of the cool things that he was able to figure out um, in order to be able to ride again. So take it away, Bob. Okay, so yeah, so I'm Bob. This is my bike, which is a Harley Davidson sport bike. So I bought this for the seat height and for the way in which the frame is configured. So that makes it ideal for a platform or a sidecar. So um, the, the, the frame sort of stays still and the wheel bounces up and down. Okay, so then obviously you had to adapt it because I can't use my feet. So these are the brakes. So this is a front brake, which is normally used by a hand, but this is the back brake. So the back brake takes the place of the foot brake, which is normally down there. Um, we had to make a bracket down here to attach it. Uh, yeah, and you've got to adapt it to whatever. And then these runner boards, originally they were foot pegs, but my feet would jump off the board, off the foot peg. So then we put this rail in, and the rail stops my uh, feet from spasming off. Okay, and these are the two uh, master cylinders for the different brakes. It's a really good setup. You buy a kit, that all comes like that with a kit and you buy them from a place in England, um, which we can give you the, the address and everything later. So then we'll keep, on, we'll keep on going around here. So then because you can't use your legs, I needed a reverse gear. So this piece here has been added onto the gearbox and in there is uh, gears for the reverse. So you got reverse and you got neutral. And so that it allows me to stick her into reverse mm -hmm. and it just goes back, just in the first gear. I was telling everybody I could do reverse in first, second, third, third fourth, fifth and sixth gear and I could go backwards at 180 kilometers an hour, but I can't. I was lying. Then I got a pannier, I'll put an extra rack on uh, for carrying my stuff. I carry a bag on here, carry another bag there and I actually carry a guitar. And I generally have a bag full of catheters actually. Okay, then I'll just grab those keys. And then we'll keep going around the bike. Then coming around this way. So now this is the ramp that was made by Brendan, who's a really good friend of mine. He got a place called BF Customs in Western Australia. And so we come up with this idea of the ramp. So the ramp, I'll just show you. It actually folds up like this. Well, then it comes down again. <laughs> He's having trouble. <laughs> I don't believe it. <gasps> we have like the worst luck. <laughs> there he goes. So, um, <laughs> what the hell is going on with that? So, um, anyway, I'll get on there. I'll have another go at that later. <laughs> Oh God Almighty! So we made this ramp and drilled all these holes. He did all this work. It's unreal. So I get on like this, or you wheel on with your bike, a wheelchair, sorry. And then I come in here. I'm happy now to go and show you the gear change. So these buttons, green is for changing up, going faster. Red is for changing down, going slower. So this again is the same kit that came from this come from this crowd. And if you can see around here, my, my cameraman is zooming around and you got a flat shifter, which is absolutely brilliant. So this is the normal um, gear stick rod. And then normally you'd be moving your foot up and down. So this has been adapted and that flat shifter pushes that lever up and down to change gear. And again, on this side, I got runner board for my feet. Okay, 
nutted. Um, well, up here I'll show you, this is a um, 16 litre fuel tank. So I've got extra fuel, which pumps fuel directly into the Harley fuel tank. So that's just this button here. You can hear it. Uh, and so I can flick that and that will pump it in when I'm riding along. So it's really good. It's great, actually. Okay, so then um, I'll just fire this and off. Then I made these, um, we put these tie-down points in and I'll put this strap and the other strap and I tighten them through the actual wheelchair itself. So when the wheelchair's on the bike, because the roads can be quite rough, particularly around here, and um, it'll stop the wheelchair from bouncing around. When I hop on, I I put this foot up here. I've got to lift this up. And then my other foot I put on the the left runner board, and then I I throw this leg over here, hang on to that handlebar, and I just push myself over onto it. So onto I mean, it's a little bit. You put your leg on yeah, the handlebar. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got here. Look, hang on to that. But I got my foot over the over oh. the tank. Oh, going to show you. Yeah, it would be really cool. I think. Yeah. All right. So it looks a bit ungainly. Now, so you know, it's like it's the same with everything else. Wherever you, wherever your feet are, is where you go. So my left foot, I'm going to put that on the rudder board. So that move, and then my right foot. I've got to go and pull this over here. Chuck it down there. Down to that. I've got to make sure that my jeans don't get caught on this thing. And then, over that, push myself over. Oh, okay. That that looked pretty easy. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, that uh, looks I'm on. <laughs> I would have done it a thousand times. Then I put, I didn't got my helmet, my gloves here, or my helmet, gloves, and away I go. Okay, so getting off is a little bit more awkward getting off, but I'll show you how I do it. And again, you know, it's where you feed it. So my left foot has got to be in the right spot. And then I bring my right foot up onto the rail. And then, same thing, you hop around and then push. Yeah. So then I'm gonna drag this foot up. One foot. And then this one. Now I'm back in the wheelchair. I'm curious about that wheelchair that you have. There's a girl that is a influencer here in Canada that has a wheelchair like that. But I can't remember the name of it. What is that? Because it's a really small power chair. Yeah, it's called a Will. W-H-I-L-L. -L. And this was a Model C. So at the time when I bought this, I've had it for about 18 months. It's, it's great. It's got these weird wheels. I'll show you in a sec. Um, and it was in Australian dollars. It was 6800 delivered to my place, yeah, which I thought was quite reasonable. That yeah. is super reasonable. Yeah, and it's um, the battery lasts. It's a lithium battery on the back, and it lasts 19 kilometers. So I take it on um, on planes, and um, yeah, it's good. It's 55 kilo. It's quite heavy, so I use it on my bike, and I use it at home. I can get down to the beach, etc. But I can't use it in my car because I can't take it apart and put it in the car. It's just too heavy. But um, yeah, it's really good. It's got four gears. And uh, first gear is really slow. The gears are up here. I should show you, right? Yeah. You can see see. There's a one. Yeah. Two, three, four. So four. If somebody was walking with me, they'd be running. You know, it's that quick. Yeah. So I put it back to one. This is the horn, which is terrible. And that's seventy nine. That's the percentage of the battery that I've used today. So I've been using it all day. So all it's all it's used is um, what's that? Twenty one percent of the battery. Really? And it's okay. yeah, it's five o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. So um, yeah, it's really good. And this is the um, like the controller, left, right, backwards. And when 
when you switch it off, it's got magnetic, it's got electromagnetic brakes, which is really good. So, so it won't move, you know, when you're hopping. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It's, uh, what was I going to say? What is the, like, what is the width of the wheelchair, um, like, the footprint of it, essentially? Like, how wide of a door do you need to get through and stuff? I think this is 650 mil. So oh. um, it's, it's, it's narrower than any manual wheelchair that I know. Yeah. My wheel... Yeah, because my... you haven't got the... Yeah? Yeah, you haven't got the wheels on the outside. No. So I'll, I'll, when I get off, I'll just show you the wheel. Um, so anyway, so coming down here. So how we designed this originally was um, we, we had the bike in Brendan's shed and put cardboard down here. I held the wheel, and then Brendan cut it out. So that's how we got the shape. And then Brendan made the frame and um, then the plate. And then we just added things, you know. It took ages to do it. But, and it was a matter of figuring things out, how we wanted it to um, to work, how it's going to work the best. And it's really good. It's really fabulous. Okay, so coming down. Whoa. Okay. All right, you got me? Yeah. I'll just show you the wheels, Ralph, on this thing. So these, see the on rollers through the front wheels? Yeah. So it'll it'll turn on a really tight circle. Oh! And it's so it's actually driven by the two wheels at the back. Huh? Those wheels on so the front. What are they made of? That looks weird. Yeah. So they're rollers. So so, see, so they'll go sideways, or they'll go or they'll go forwards. Whoa! And, that's and this cool. Little, yeah, and like in Australia, there's a lot of gravel in um, driveways and things like that. And this will do gravel easy. It'll do some sand, as long as it's not deep. Um, it'll do grass or everything like that. It is really, really good. So um, I love it. Yeah, I'll put a roll hole um, cushion on to make it a bit more comfortable. And you can hang a back off it. And also, I haven't got it on, but it, it's in the house. Um, is um, I've got a basket which fits underneath. And um, we, I actually, with a mate, went and made a cover for it. So when I've got it on the bike, if it rains, the wheelchair is dry. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Good mate. That is a cool like, little wheelchair. Yeah, and I, and it really is, it really is narrow. And when when Ralph takes these pictures of me when he's standing up, I look like I've got a big head, a medium sized body, little legs, and tiny feet. That, um, on this on this thing, but it is just so good. I love it, and it'll also climb steps this high. What? So there's a secret. Yeah, it'll climb a step this high. So and uh, it'll do several steps. Actually, it's really good because it just pushes from the back. It's amazing, and I think for the price, it's just great. So having this, um, you, you know, obviously you need a manual wheelchair as well. But um, yeah, it's great. Oh, there it goes. I think all it was, I didn't know, I wasn't pressing the button. See these buttons? Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't pressing it down properly, that was all. So, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's how it goes up and down. And see, when, I, when I'm on it, and then I lock it, I um, oh. put that around and lock it on. So it, it also can't uh, come undone. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's, and yeah, it's you... just all these little... Can you say what the what you guys used, what that mechanism was? It was like for a window yes. or something? Yeah, that's this one over here. Oh. So, this is, yeah, it's an actuator, um, this thing, for, for a window. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can see, I undid that, didn't I? Did I undo it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's keep working there. So all it really is is like a shock absorber. You know, it's just got a pump in the middle. Yeah. And that's all it is. So we got it from a place called... Oh, you can get them everywhere. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I've forgotten. I, I said where it was. Um, 
before. But anyway, you, you could, yeah, that's a good idea, Ralph. If you can see it there. Yeah, Tim Tom yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but if you look for a window uh, actuator, I think actuator is the thing, and it works. Yeah. Um, and then if you come around here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So yeah, it's really cool. So this is so see this wheel. It's the same as the back wheel on the bike that I got. And then Brendan went and turned this up. The guy's a genius, and um, on his lathe, it was polished, looked really good originally. Um, and then we're coming around here, and this is my traveling commode. Yeah. Which, well, get to I'll get to this in a sec. I'll just show you around the front. It's around the front here. Ta -da. Got to see my dragon. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can see. Can you get down for that? That's so yeah. good. So that's that's airbrushed. Like I said, a friend of mine's a tattoo artist, and um, he airbrushed that on and put six coats of lacquer on it. It's just so good. So I wanted an evil-looking dragon. Dragon. Um, and then when you when you have a sidecar and outfit like this, you need you always need a steering damper, which is what this is. And otherwise, you get head shakes. The head shakes are when the handlebars start moving oh. left and right without control. So they're important. And you can also put a different type of fork on to this. Um, but this one works all right. They, they call it a lead and a link, um, which gives it like power steering. But, but this one's fine. And then I've got this stick, which is so if I drop something when I'm sitting on the bike, yeah, obviously... Like I dropped a glove once and then to go and pick it up, I had to go and do all this and get all the way around. And, and so now i got this pickup stick yeah. and um, it's just the little things, you know, that make a big difference. Yeah. Okay. Uh, put it back in, in here, so that's the fuel tank. And then in here, this is another storage compartment, which has got junk in it. But, uh, and this is, there's a spare battery under here. These are the fuses for the, um, the fuel pump. Yeah, and also this button here, you can see these wires. So if the battery was flat on the bike, I press this button for ten seconds, and the other one cuts in. Oh, so that that's another Harley battery. So it's just like a jump starter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now the next thing is the commode. So I'll just put my beer down, which is a Heineken. Yeah, because that's people Maybe are going to be wondering. Yeah, well, somebody asked the other day, yeah. didn't it? It's the only question I understood. That was the, yeah, um, exactly the question, the first question. Yeah, what beer am I drinking? <laughs> so now I, um, so I, you know, I mean, like most of us, um, to go and sit on a hard seat, hard toilet seat is really, it's awful. It's painful and all the rest of it. and so uncomfortable. So when I'm traveling, I like to go and bring my own commode. So, um I bought a, a standard um, light, lightweight commode, and then we altered it. And I cut and welded it five times. And then um, and the other thing I should say is that how we've done this is that I can put this on my lap, and I can actually go through a door. It's, oh. it's, it's generally narrower than most doors, you know. So, and you can put this strap over your head, actually. So now in here, it's all the bits and pieces. So we got a cushion. So a cushion. And then this is the backrest. And then... This is all a very tight fit, but we've done it deliberately, really. Did that bag come with it, or did you get that made? Uh, another mate of mine in Albany. Oh. So he made that, um, the bag, which is really good. That was the second one he made, I think. And, um, yeah, it's just perfect. So, yeah, excellent. You've got a, you've got a friend, right? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah. Now this fits like that, and this goes up here, and then oh, I gotta use it. I got damaged hands. I didn't just damage my back. I damaged 
my pelvis broke in half, my hands got plates in them. So the only way I can do, like, go to the toilet, open my bowels and use it, is to use my left hand. Yeah. Because I haven't got as much movement in my right. Um, actually, before I put that on, I'll show you. So, like, that bow would normally be, like, straight, yeah. like that. But we turned it around and flattened it. And that means when you put your hand underneath, you know, you're not getting it caught or anything. Yeah. Um, we, I wanted the right height. Um, but we can still adjust it by the legs down the bottom. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, and then um, it was just a lot of experimenting. But I didn't, this thing originally, I think it was, I think it was about $110. Um, but it had big side bars like this. And so when I'm hopping, I might be hopping, you know, from here onto there. So I'd be able to the side bars, you know, because it's sticking up here. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we cut them, lowered this. But you can, I can still hang on to that, but I can get over there easily. Yeah. See what I mean? And I couldn't see that. Yeah, I couldn't see the point in this hard bath. So yeah, it was just I, a matter Yeah, of, they would make it harder. Like, for somebody maybe that yeah. had to, like, stand up and sit down, you know, that needed those bars for, like, the leverage, but they're just in the way if you have to transfer for us. Yeah, that's right. And you can see, like, you know, we cut this and all the rest of it. So we bent the legs out. So we deliberately bent the legs out as well. Yeah. And so we sort of, yeah, we just, just stuck them in a vice and um, brought them out of it. But it's really good. It's light and it fits in that bag. And, um, yeah, and then made the bag to suit that. And then this we made for that because I obviously had somewhere to go and yeah. um, needed somewhere to go and carry it. Um, Yeah, so it's just cut and well, cut and well, cut and well, and until you can see. I mean, it's a bit rough. You can see where we cut it by there, and re welded it. You know. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was just a matter, and it was the same with this. I would use it and think, oh, we could do it a little bit better than that, you know, and just change it. Um, but it's great. And I made a another one for a friend of mine, and he's taken that across the desert of Australia. So um, yeah, it's been really good. So and this has been to a few countries now. So. Um, yeah, it's great, and um, I carry it in the bag and put it in with the rest of the luggage, and away I go. That's awesome. Um, one thing I wanted to ask about, like, the travels, um, because obviously you can't carry the amount of catheters with you that you're going to need uh, for the whole trip. Do you just stop wherever you are and get more? Um, yeah, so I found out before I left. I use so what I've been using these speedy cap when I'm traveling, um, and they they new ones. They got it's called a flex set. It's got a built-in bag, yeah, and um, and they're really small. So um, I've been using them. They're really expensive. Um, back home in Australia, I would be getting um, help with the the finance of that. But on this trip, I'm paying for it myself. So like, I just ordered another dozen boxes. And there's 30 in a box. A dozen boxes, what's that, 360? That's like, that was like 1,400 pounds, yeah, yeah, which is a lot of money. But, I mean, what else you do, you know? know. So um, and my other thing is I don't want to get UTIs. Yeah. And I've had them before. And so these, you, you never touch the actual um, yeah. catheter pad itself that goes inside, you know? So um, I really like them. They're really good. So what I've done before I left Australia was um, got a list of places actually everywhere in the world where you can order them from. Oh. And so I, I've got the, the number, the serial number of what I need. I know what size I am and everything. And I just ordered some more today while I'm here. And then, uh, but I end up, I generally take two bags full of catheters on the back of the bike. And this is generally full of catheters as well, you know? Yeah. So, um, that's yeah, always it, my biggest thing when I travel is like it's full of catheters because, yeah, it's yeah. it's a lot of catheters to take for however long and you're gone for a month at a time. So, yeah, I was just curious about that. But, yeah, it makes sense that you would just order them wherever you are. Yeah, and when, I, when we shipped the, the bike <clears throat> except from Australia, I just filled everything up with catheters on it, you know. So, um, yeah, I sort of have a little chuckle when customs sort of, 
look through your bags and they think, what the hell are these things, you know? But, um, I know, it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's just a fact of life, isn't it? Yeah, it totally is. The only question that I think I forgot to ask this time uh, was if you've ever burned yourself on that exhaust. Because I know that I've had friends that ride ATVs and other off-road vehicles that have had that experience. Um, so can you maybe talk about if that's ever happened or if your leg gets close enough to the exhaust or if the exhaust is even hot enough? Yeah, I'll show you. Oh, the exhaust definitely gets hot enough. Um, I'll just come around here. And the other reason I'm coming around here is I'm getting a beer all the way through. Um, so one of the reasons why I bought this bike was, uh, it was another reason, was the exhaust is all on one side. Oh. So there's no exhaust on the other side. So that means that the only place where I'm going to burn it is on this. This is actually a cover. So this is a, uh, a cover. So the actual exhaust itself is underneath it. So it's not quite as hot as the actual exhaust, but it's still hot. And I did burn myself once. I think it was on the air cleaner, actually, and just a little bit, but only once in 80 months. So when I hopped off, you know, I put my foot on that rail. Yeah. And the whole idea of putting my foot on the rail was so it's away from all this. Oh. <clears throat> and then when I lifted, yeah, then when I lifted up, I lifted straight up, and um, yeah, it seems to work. Okay. So um, yeah, the yeah, I agree. You definitely got to be really aware because you don't know. Um, the only issue I had once was I had on shoes, not my motorbike boots. And I, as I jumped on, my shoe started slipping off my left shoe. And, um, I didn't realize it, but my foot was up against the engine on the other side. And that sort of, oh, that burnt my foot. And obviously you can't feel it, you know? Yeah. But, um. Yeah, but you learn by mistakes. So I always wear motorcycle boots now when I'm riding. Yeah, just so that they're like tied up around your ankle, kind of. Yeah, and they just got a bit more, they got more meat on them, you know? So um, I, I, it's impossible for me to go and burn, burn my feet now. Yeah. See, that was like, I think mm. one of my one of my questions is always when people ride a, like a modified bike that's like that, is how do you keep your feet or your legs away from the exhaust? But if it's not... If you're careful, you can do it and make sure that your legs are not right up against it. Um, so I wonder yeah. if there's like, I wonder if there's lots of bikes out there that have those covers on the exhaust that protect it or from getting so hot. Is that a normal well, thing? Well, you could. You could. Yeah, there's no reason why you can't modify an exhaust and have it coming underneath and out that way or something like that. There's no reason why you can't change things around. But that, and that's another reason for these runner boards, see? So the runner boards, my feet fit in here. Yeah. Oh so yeah. my feet are further away yeah, than, that, than the engine, so it cools them off too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I'm, yeah, but I'm very aware if there's a lot of traffic and I'm stuck in a traffic jam or something, I'm really aware. And um, I might even pull over and let the motor cool down and make sure my feet are all right before I continue on. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you just got to be careful. But, um. Do you ever no, have to worry good. about I'm... pressure sores on your butt on that mo that seat on the motorbike? Like it, it's not well, too hard. No, and that's the other thing that I was a bit worried about. Um, the good thing about this seat is the shape. Oh. So because it's a saddle seat, it keep it hold, helps hold me in. When I sit on, I got a BMW, an old one, which I modified too, and that's a flat seat, and I've got to hang on to something all the time. Yeah. To to do something. For me, the time I am it on, um, I've got to lie down on the seat, you know, because yeah. you've got two hands. So this one here, it's a good seat, and it's quite sort of soft there. It looks hard, but it's not very soft. Yeah. Um, but never, nevertheless, I stop um, often. So um, I can't, you know, I can't sort of go like that, and my, seat, my, my bum comes off the seat. So I've got to go and actually push it off, you know, like everybody else. And so I'll pull over and stop, and then I'll wiggle around on it. And every, uh, I don't know, maybe 180 kilometers, oh. I'll stop. And I'll get into the wheelchair, and then I'm in a different position again. So I'm really aware of sores, because when I was in hospital in Africa, they didn't turn me at one stage. I ended up with one on my back, and that took so long. Um, when I finally got the perk, it took so long for that that saw to um, go, I think it was six weeks yeah. of tuning me every three hours. So 
Yeah, I'm really aware of that. And I certainly, but I, um, apart from that, uh, on the bike, I've never had a sore. So it's been really good. It really has been good. Yeah, I love it. Good. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wide. Well, I don't know. I think we've. I think we covered everything that we covered before. Um, do you think? <laughs> is there anything that you think we missed? I don't think so. No, I think we got it pretty good. But um, yeah. No, I think I think it's yeah. Yeah, it gives it anyway. It gives people an idea of what you can do, you know, and you can you can they might other people might have even better ideas still. Yeah. I see I see lots of different ones, but um, yeah, th for me this suits me really well. It suits my this wheelchair, and uh, yeah, I love it. And it really this has enhanced my life. Without this, um, yeah, I would find it really hard. I'd struggle more, I think, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, this definitely enhanced my life. I love it. Fabulous. And I've got to say, Harley Davidson, um, while I'm in the UK, they're paying for all my servicing, tires, everything. Oh, that's so, awesome. I'm really, yeah, I'm really grateful. They've just been so good. So, um, yeah, no, it's fabulous. No, I'm enjoying this elf. It's a really, it's really good. It's good fun. Yeah. Better than driving a car. You're going to have to learn, a, learn to ride a bike. Um, I feel like... I feel like uh, we should do um, another video when you get home just about your whole story because it's really amazing. Um, it's it's a story worth hearing for sure for a lot of people in wheelchairs, um, but it's probably a long one. So we'll save that and we'll give a little teaser that that's going to happen um, later on. I don't know how much longer you're in. How, long, how much longer are you in the UK for? Uh, I think I fly out on September the September the eighth, something like that. Okay, so it's still so, the whole uh, summer. Okay, so you you guys will have to wait for a while. It's just uh, I want to make sure we have a good connection or whatever when we actually do it. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's a story worth worth hearing. If you guys want um, something cool to listen to, definitely go and listen to Bob Reese the Journey. He's a musician too, so motorcycle adventurous musician. He's like traveled the world. Um, just like so many amazing things, um, to share, honestly, uh, and interesting things. So if you, if you guys want to listen to an amazing album, that's about mostly about your wife, right? That passed away in the accident. Well, it was another way of me coping, you know, cause I struggled cause my wife, um, was, you know, she died in the crash and, um, I mean, she was alive for, um, seven and a half hours. And we were together and we were married for 47 years. So that really, I still struggle with that. It's only four years next month. And obviously, you know, um, being in a wheelchair um, is also a bit of a struggle too. I'm still, I get around, I do all this stuff, but you know what it's like. Some some days you really got to push yourself to get out of bed. But um, yeah, and there's also, I don't know, Facebook, I've got a public page called uh, same thing, Bob Reister Jr. on Facebook, and it's showing you what I'm doing on this trip. If anybody wants to have a look at that, they can yeah. just click onto it and away they go. Definitely do. It's, yeah, it's like I said, you're a person worth following for sure. Every time I hear things about your life, I'm like, damn, I'm boring. I don't know why anybody wants to listen to me, but um, yeah, no, it's, we're gonna, we're gonna definitely get the whole rundown of your of your story of your accident and all that stuff once you get back okay. but thank you so much for okay. this it is really great to see people that get back to doing the things that make them feel like themselves because mm -hmm. i think you kind of lose a bit of your identity when you have an accident that you know takes away your physical abilities and as long as you can find a, a way to get back to the things that bring you joy i think that's part of living a fulfilling life and you know, being happy, which is a hard thing for some people after they're paralyzed. So you're a great example of that. Um, thank you again for just uh, one, two, three. We've honestly done this video <laughs> so many times. So I apologize for my incompetence. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions that are watching this right now, uh, leave them in the comments and I will make sure to either screenshot or just tell tell Bob to go watch the comments in the video and he can answer them directly, but we'll get them answered either way. 
Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll schedule the, the next time we're going to have a conversation and I'll make sure I let everybody know when that's going to be. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks again for showing me the bike and I will catch all of the viewers on another video and I will catch you when we catch up again to talk about your story, Bob.